building software and the way the software in the organization is actually built. So most software development life cycles have four phases, depending, whether you use waterfall or extreme programming or a them in kind of four phases. There's a planning phase where you decide what you're going to build. There's a building phase where you implement it. There's a testing phase where you try to decide whether what you built is sort of what you planned. And then there's a deploying or shipping or giving to the customer phase. Um, most of those wrong activities that I talked about earlier fall late in the process. And that's one of the big shortcomings is that the software is already built. It's hard to recover from mistakes that you've entered. What we're going to advocate and what the, the industry is moving towards is pushing activities earlier in the software development life cycle. Doing things like risk analysis when you're designing your software building requirements for it. Doing things like and uh, doing things like security testing in your QA organization before it would ever make it to a penetration test. So giving you a little introduction to the problem. Next, I'm going to talk about kind of the high-level definition of static analysis. I'm going to go into uh, the inner workings of a static analysis tool and talk about some of the internals. And I'll give some tips and ideas about how you can best adopt a static analysis tool in a real enterprise. So what is static analysis? Static analysis is any sort of software program analysis that doesn't involve running the program itself. So you're reviewing the text, the code of the program, and simulating one of the big advantages of this is that it's able to contemplate many, many possible, uh, possible executions of the program without actually invoking them. So one of the limitations of runtime testing is in order to test uh, a given path through the program, you need to provide input and interact with the program in a way so as to exercise that. Static analysis gets all of these for free because it can consider every path through the program, simulate those, and try to make determinations about what would happen when they actually ran. Um, downsides. Static analysis doesn't know what your software is supposed to do. And it doesn't know how to look for problems until you define what those problems are. Last five years, anyway, uh, building software tools. But it's interesting to step back and think a little bit about some other tools. This is my favorite one, the chainsaw. I like the chainsaw, particularly in comparison with software, for two reasons. Um, one, people treat chainsaws with respect. Not many accidents with chainsaws happen for first-time chainsaw owners. You don't go to the store and buy one and come home and cut your leg off. You read the manual, you start with a very small tree, and you work your way up. Uh, I think people would, would really benefit themselves by treating software tools with a little more care and a little more uh, respect. Second, people don't expect chainsaws to solve the problem for them. So you don't buy a chainsaw. I expect to wake up the next morning and see that all the trees are cut down. Likewise, uh, software tools make experts more effective at certain things, but they don't solve the problem for them. You're not going to put a tool into your process and suddenly have secure code. It just doesn't work that way. Um, a good analogy is a lumberjack without a chainsaw would be kind of a joke. All his buddies would laugh at him and it would be bad news. But just because you have a chainsaw doesn't mean you're a lumberjack. So we all know a little more about static analysis, or we've been exposed to it more than uh, at least I thought about before I got so heavily involved. Um, compilers use static analysis for doing things like type checking, of um, style checking, and even some code quality checks and looking for bugs with static analysis while you're developing your code. Another example that uh, has made its way into the IDEs, but uh, happens in standalone tools as well, is something called program understanding where you do static analysis of a project and try to better uh, visualize or enable someone to understand how the various components are glued together. Program verification and property checking, which is kind of a watered down version of that, uh, is maybe the most extreme application of static analysis. So the idea here is you're going to give the tool a complete specification of what the software it's analyzing and what it's not supposed to do, conversely. And once you implement it, you can verify the actual implementation against that specification. The reason you don't see this too widely applied in the extreme case today is that writing a specification for exactly what a piece of software can and cannot do is roughly equivalent to as much work as writing the piece of software itself. So except in very, very controlled systems where 
correctness is, uh, is uh, critical and that cost of writing such a detailed specification is acceptable. We don't see this applied today. And then the last two are the ones that uh, have become more popular in the last five years for security and 10 or 15 for bug finding. Um, using static analysis mistakes, whether they lead to quality problems or whether they lead to security issues. We're going to talk about the last one, obviously. So why is static analysis good for security? Um, it's fast compared to manual code review. This is my favorite uh, situation to go in and try to sell a software a static analysis tool for security into is in an environment where people have done manual code review before. Because anyone who's done it by hand understands that however perfect or imperfect the tool is, having some help, some automation is much better than doing it manually. Um, IBM did great experiments about 20 years ago to show that static analysis was faster than uh, manual or, or runtime testing as well found that roughly uh, 20 times slower to find a bug through traditional software testing where you execute the program than through static analysis where you simulate that execution. And that wasn't even taking security into account. Um, as I said before, tools give complete and consistent coverage. So unlike in a manual code review where you come back from lunch and you have a burger and a beer and then you, uh, you miss a critical bug because you're not quite, quite paying attention. The tool, however perfect or imperfect, is always going to apply the same uh, analysis capabilities to the software each time you use it. So you can begin to depend on what it's going to find and what it's not going to find. And the last two are integrally related to one another. Um, the tool brings security expertise along with it. And that allows non-experts to begin to get security relevant decisions correct, even when uh, they don't necessarily have that body of knowledge uh, or they haven't spent the time or had, had the, the resources to develop that body of knowledge. The tool can bring it along with them and kind of point out the areas that they should be concerned about. So static analysis for security uh, I think has kind of a bad rap these days and partly because of the early implementations of it. Um, tools like RATS, ITS4, Flaw Finder were, came about uh, you know, early 2001, 2002 and they were roughly uh, glorified grep. These were great tools for security practitioners. They allowed us to bring together a huge list of APIs that might lead to vulnerabilities that could be misused, things that basically form an audit checklist, and then consistently apply that checklist to an entire code base and come out with a list of things that a human should go through and review. Now, give one of these tools to a developer and you've created a real problem because they're not bug finding tools. They don't report problems in the code. They report places that you should go inspect, which is not necessarily what a developer is signed up for, unlike a security auditor where that's their job. So modern static analysis tools. I think it advances, but the most important thing you should differentiate between those early tools and modern tools is the ability to prioritize the output. Um, in this example, we've got two potential buffer overflows, two calls to stir copy, unbounded string copy function, probably a bad idea no matter what. The first one, you're copying a very short static string into a buffer that has plenty of room to hold it. Not a buffer overflow, probably bad code hygiene, you might want to remove it, but not exploitable today. The second one, you're copying a command line argument that the attacker can supply any value they like for into a static buffer on the stack, which is clearly an exploitable buffer overflow. You want high on the priority list, certainly compared to the first. So what won't you find with static analysis? Um, it's much more like a microso microscope than like a telescope. It's good at looking at very small uh, minutia of your program in great detail. It's not good for finding architectural errors for the most part because they have to do more with the view from 50,000 feet. How's the, what's the design? How are the various components glued together? Um, as we said before, you're only going to find bugs that you've told the tool to look for. So make sure it's uh, that you've defined the set of, uh, of uh, vulnerabilities that you're interested in finding and that the tool you select uh, goes after those. With problems that are introduced after your software goes off and gets used, either by the people who deploy it or by the end users. Um, there are certain exceptions to this. Maybe there's a configuration option that's dangerous and the static analysis tool got to inspect that before the software was released, but in general, misuse at runtime is outside of the purview of something that's only looking at the code before it's released. So the first static analysis tools that looked for uh, bugs were typically looking for quality problems. 
And there's an interesting contrast between looking for quality issues with static analysis and looking for security issues.